Good morning, everybody. This is Martin John, and I am here to present the Dow of the day. So the Dow of the day starts, and it's centered on this whole. Uh, it is centered on the Dao Day Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient text written about 600 BCE, and um, the whole kind of premise of the Tao Te Ching is how to is helping us like live a reasonable life. That is the best way that I can describe what the Tao Te Ching is, and and I I look at the Tao Te Ching as being the canon of reason, right? Is the collection of writings that helps us live this reasonable life. How can you live a more reasonable life? How can you live a life? in which you can allow others the space and the uh, ability to do what they want to do and uh, be who they want to be without getting involved, without getting yourself in the middle of it, without putting yourself in this place of being in, in, affected by what other people do. You know, very often, I mean, I talk to clients all the time who, you know, don't get like how they can allow others to do what they do. And when they, when I do present it to them, they're just like, well, this is just like going with the flow and da, da, da. And I was like, well, yes, in a sense, it is very much like going with the flow. But if that's being forced in any way, then you're not going with the flow. And so we have to recognize within ourselves the, the depths that we can connect to. And when we connect to those depths, there's really nothing more that we would want to do. And so that's the greatest thing about the Tao and, and being able to communicate with, through the Tao. So what I ask in these uh, in these shows that I do Monday through Friday here on Wisdom in the mornings uh, Central Time, usually, I mean, I do miss some days here and there, but um, what I like to do is I like to come on and ask you to pick a number. So you come up and pick a number between 1 and 81, and I will uh, read your Tao for the day. Now, for those of you who don't follow me here on Wisdom, and for those who uh, are new to Tao of the Day, uh, I've been writing my own translation of the Tao. Now the Tao Te Ching has been translated many, many times uh, in English and probably every other language. Uh, it is very much uh, a an ancient text that we look to as a society, and I think that we've, we have uh, given it its due in terms of it being an important text, of course, that's not not as you know. It's not it's not as pervasive as the Bible or um, the Quran or something like that. But but it's out there, and it is an ancient text that I think really considers a um, a, a looking a looking at if you're interested in spiritual journeys, if you're interested in. Um, logical philosophical ways of living that allow you the space to be yourself uh all of the work i do because i'm coming out of addiction so i have 21 years almost 22 years clean and sober um one of the things that i talk about a lot is how, what is it we're doing to recover ourselves so what are we doing to recover towards who we are rather than recovering from what we've done or who we used to be. So when we talk about recovery in that sense, we really have to look at some of these bigger aspects of philosophy, some of these bigger aspects of spirituality, because that is who we are, right? You are not what you do. So even if you are, you know, so many people that are in the recovery world, like, you know, they talk about their recovery and how they are recovering from something. And, and to Position yourself there is great in this world of marketing and advertising. However, it can often, and I've seen people um, go this route, um, that can put them in a position where it's difficult for them to admit they're having a rough time because they are a leader in that field. And then they show up dead after an overdose or something like that. And that's always... Uh, that's a loss to the world. It's a loss, obviously, to them. It's a loss to so many. Uh, and, and so what we do here in the Tao is really look at what is it we're recovering towards. So you're always moving towards something. And if you're moving towards something, you don't have to leave anything out. Every moment is a moment of 
uh, every moment that you live when you're recovering towards something is a moment that is a part of you. It's a moment that is a part of the whole. When you're recovering from something, you look at it as like, I've left something behind. And so we, instead of looking forward at like, yes, that which is behind me may also be in front of me, um, you are only looking at what's behind you, right? Like, so when you look at recovering from, you look behind you and you say, I left this behind. And if you picked that thing back up, then you're not doing well, right? The, the, the quick answer, the, the answer of how are you doing in this moment? Well, not well is okay. It's okay to not be doing well in this moment because when we're moving towards something, we might not be doing well at this moment, but we know we're moving towards something. When we, when we look at this idea of recovering from something, we look, well, we put this down and now, well, we're fucking up again if we're doing it again. And so the Tao is a great text to help with this because the Tao really helps us understand that like whatever's going on right now, whether it's good, bad, or ugly or whatever, we, we do have this space that we can exist within and that's okay. Um, so I'm going to pick a number, unless somebody wants to come up and pick a number between 1 and 81. I always am open to talking and sharing Dow with you guys. Ah, Julie. Julie, my dear. I hope, uh, I hope you can stick around for a whole 15 and we can go through a Dow together. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? It's afternoon for you now, isn't it? Yes, just. Just at 12.08. 1208. Yes, it's just just getting on in the day here. Um, oh, it's good to have you again. Thank you for joining me. Our uh, pleasure. It's just, you know, something told me, let's call it the Tao. Yeah. What? Uh, <laughs> so, so I, I finished all 81, by the way. Perfect. And I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm translating those into Spanish and then I'm going to be putting it up, uh, putting it up on my site and doing some, uh, doing some fundraising so that I can do a, uh, so that I can make an Oracle deck. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, so... just let me know how the fundraising can be added to, because I am a woman of my word, as you well know. I know <laughs> that saying to you, well done, and I support you, is very different from actually supplying you with the, uh, with the tools to do the job. Yeah. So well, let I, me know, I and I will that. supply yeah. as much tool as I can <laughs> to help well, you Well, yeah, just, it. you know, even, even, even telling your people, um, especially, uh, where are you staying now? I'm on my boat again. Oh, you're on your boat again. Okay. Yeah. And when are you moving out with the teepee? I don't know yet. That's going to be in the next six months. That's not an immediate. Oh, okay. That is something in the future. So, uh, yeah, it'll be about six months or so. There's lots of things in the planning, but I have made progress with the hypnotherapy line. Yeah. Because I'm thinking that that, for me, is going to be comfortable. It's going to be something I'm going to enjoy. It's a yeah. new path. So, yeah. You know, it's interesting as, as we go through our lives and we, we, we ebb and flow in and out of different things. Uh, you know, like for so long, I was talking about the recovery stuff. And I realize now, like, I don't talk about that much at all. Like, it's it's really shifted over the last year. Yeah. And, and I'm really grateful for wisdom and me kind of leaning into the Tao and doing all of this. Uh, because this is really what helped me through my recovery and stuff. And so it's yeah. uh, it's a little deeper than just simple like recovery stuff. And so I'm, I'm really grateful for it, but I'm interested because I'm just kind of like observing it. You know, I'm observing this shift. I'm mm -hmm. saying, huh, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in my life right now, right? Like yeah. I'm in love with Andy and I'm moving to Indiana and there's all of these like, all of these things that are happening in my life that like, over the last year, I had no idea. I had no idea this was going to be happening. Right? Can you feel your essence tingling as you talk about it? Yes. Yeah. Like it's all very exciting. You know, it's all. Yeah. It's all like we'll see where it all kind of where it all takes me. But yeah. But yeah. So, uh, so do you have a number for me? I do. Number four today. Number four. Pointed out to me by a kingfisher. Ah. Okay. Number, number four. four. Yeah. All right, I titled this The Void. 
Okay, that's good. Tao is the void, and the void is within everything as it relates to what is perceptible, like cells, everything is mostly void. As the origin of everything, it is hidden within every particular thing. The master knows it is even the source of God, and yet others still go searching. I like that. That's lovely. <laughs> so what are some of your thoughts? Well, as you were as you were sort of speaking, I could understand exactly what you were talking about. In everything, there is empty. Yeah. In everything, there is nothing. Yes. And it's quite pleasant. I I enjoy that. That suddenly my eyes tell me that things are particular things so at the moment i've got a crow walking around on the moorings yeah i'm looking at the reeds that are there's many many of them and yet inside there is space yeah. and uh, i like to think of that void as feeling that's how i i feel I feel that space, even yeah. though it's not there. That that is the best way I can describe what I felt when you were saying what you were saying. So if you say that sentence again, I'll get that feeling that everything has the essence of nothing, but right. I still feel it. And one of the great things about this is is this idea that like you even are mostly nothing. Yes, right. I and, am part. I am part and parcel of everything that is right. Nothing. And and so sounds it's like, crazy, doesn't it? it crazy, right. But <laughs> that this is was, this was <laughs> such a beautiful. I'm gonna I'm gonna read because I have a note that's attached to this. I'm gonna read this. It's a couple lines. Uh, because it is the source of God, how can the master ever begin to put into words her understanding of it? Mm -hmm. We have already learned that words and names are limiting. Now, this is because of uh, verse one of the Tao, which states that, you know, like, if it can be spoken, it's not the real Tao. Um, she will relinquish her need to understand Tao as something particular. She will relinquish her need to understand Tao as something particular and embrace mm -hmm. the void within herself. And yeah. she does this. As she does this, her connection to Tao and all things is cared for. Absolutely. And so, you know, there's, there's this, so we're going to go through this line by line, but, but there's this idea that like it being the source of God, it being the source of you, it being the source of all things, we start to like the, the concept here, as I was writing, it was like, I want to blur the line. I want to blur the line between you and everything else. Because we have been addressing in the first three Tao, we do address that you can't express it and it's everywhere, right? And so here, this is like really pointing out how it is the emptiness. Yeah. So me saying that I can feel it is the best descriptive I can give. Yeah. Because I because, can't you know, even tell you what I am feeling because that will be naming it again. But right. I definitely, definitely feel it. And you invite other people to explore what they feel yes. without you telling them what you feel. Like you don't have to tell them, well, I feel a tingling or I feel a sense or I feel like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to create anything particular. You just have to be like, oh. I'm here with emptiness. Yeah. I am, I am, I'm not, you know, like possessing emptiness. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm feeling empty. Boo hoo. I'm experiencing you know? full stop. Right. I'm, I'm experiencing. experiencing nothingness. I'm experiencing the void within all of this. Mm. You know, and, and as this starts, Tao is the void. What a, you know, like it's just a big state. And the void is within within everything, and so here we are. Like 
we make the statement, Tao is the void, the void is in everything. And then as it relates to what is perceptible, everything is mostly void. And everything that's perceptible is made up of matter, made up of cells, right? Made up of stuff. And within those cells, within that, there is empty space. And we all know that through science and through just mm. understanding. I mean, if you have if you have a rudimentary, you know, education in science, you know that a cell, you know, has some things in it, but it's mostly empty. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's what that was one of my favorite things, cells and discovery. And that energy. There's a little tiny thing in every cell that it releases energy. How cool is that? That's right. And, 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 you know, and that thing is, <laughs> you know, even though it's not, you know, we can't, every cell is alive. You know, every cell is a living thing, you know, I mean, unless it's a dead cell, of course, but, but within it, there is all of this emptiness. Mm. And then within us, we are made up of cells. So within us, there is all of this emptiness. And, and, you know, and so the Tao is that emptiness that holds everything together. And then as the origin of anything, as the origin of everything, it is hidden within every particular thing. Yeah. And the it's always I'm... with well, what I think about that is if you think of something being empty, then that means that things can go through it. It can be permeated and leave again mm. because it's always empty. Mm -hmm. But that's great. That's good. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to be empty. No, it's because receiving it's a, it's a way of being able to receive and let go. Yeah. Receiving is the, you know, like is such a, you know, I mean, I, I've said it many times, this idea of like, if you can, like receiving should be an Olympic sport, you know, like, yeah. because we, we, we really, and I, and I put out uh, one of my quote things <clears throat> about receiving, you know, being something that we need to practice. You know, it's like, it's, if we don't practice receiving, how do we think we're going to be good at it? It's like, <laughs> You know, I mean, we can, we can, we can have all of these influencers and all these people talking about like, be happy, be good, be, you know, blah, 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 all of these things. But it's like, <laughs> like, okay, but you know, like I like to talk about it as like, well, practice, can you practice receiving? Can you practice being like, instead of, instead of being like, be happy, can you, can you just practice being happy? Like for two hours a day? Like, it's kind of like practicing, you know, being a, being, being a footballer, practicing being, a, you know, like any, like, you know, we talk about practice when we, when it look, when we look at sport, but we don't talk about it when we look at life too much. And yet we're practicing every day, but what are we practicing doing? Are we practicing watching Netflix? Because I think a lot of people practice watching Netflix and it's like, well, is that something that, that you want to get better at? Because I think you're as good as, as you're going to get. And maybe you can start practicing another sport. Yeah. So my practice of the last year has been practicing the feeling of being empty. Yeah. That's and not knowing and being okay with that, right? Being yeah. okay with not knowing. Yes. That is, the, that is my ultimate is being happy about not knowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Like if we, if we, if we look at this verse, the void yeah. as, you know, Tao is the void and this idea of like, well, in nature, this thing exists within everything because it's empty. So in you, how can you emulate that? The more you emulate that, the more you become like the master. The master is someone who can emulate Tao. And if you can emulate Tao in your mind and in your body, where you just allow these things, then you are emulating nature. You're just allowing this stuff and you don't have to know. You don't have to have an answer beforehand. All you have to do is be here and experience this moment as it unfolds. 
because this yeah. is the moment that is unfolding. And, and if you step up to any moment, and if that moment becomes something that is, um, that you're hold on to, well, then, then you fill yourself up, then you close off. And as, and if you feel, if you, if you fill that empty space of a cell, it would just fall off. It wouldn't be able to vibrate. It, it wouldn't it's, be able to move. It's used. Yeah. It's and used then, and then the capacity for it becomes nil. Yeah. If you fill you, something up, you can't fill it anymore. Right. You know, and the that's whole why. point is to receive. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this, you know, like after we find out that it is hidden within every particular thing, just like when you can empty your mind and you can not know what's next and be comfortable with that. Like it will present you with particular things and then those particular things will fall away and then you'll be open to the next particular thing, Yeah, you know, like, and it's just this ebb and flow. And then the final lines here, the master knows it is even the source of God and yet others still go on searching. Yeah. You know, and I liked that. I liked how I finished that because there's this idea that, you know, you like can make a, you can make a, a life career out of searching. That's right. That's right. And you, you can, you can search with no intention to find and not even know it, not even know that you have inadvertently skipped over finding. You just like searching because searching can often get us pretty high. Oh, I lost you. You can come back up if you need. Um, but um, searching can get us high. Searching can put us in a position where we find ourselves, where we find ourselves uh, feeling good about ourselves because we're searching. It's occupancy. It's again, yeah. filling. Yeah, filling it, filling it, filling it with purpose, right? My purpose is to search. Yeah. No, like your purpose is to be. So what, what, what are you being at this moment? And that's why, you know, that's why, you know, like, I mean, I pick on Netflix a little bit, but I, you know, like <laughs> we all, we all watch things, right? We all kind of get into those positions of being like, oh, I'm going to pacify. You know, I was talking to a client the other day and she was like, you know, like I watch things I've watched before. And I was like, I do that, you know, like, but it's like, are you practicing other things? as well are you are you recognizing that this is your life and that what you're doing today is probably what you're going to be doing in 20 years um or <laughs> you're going to be better at it or you you know like and and for me it's like you know i thought you know like i mentioned this when we first got on the line um that you know like it's interesting as my focus changes from recovery to Dow. Mm. you know it's like as long as I know I'm continuing to shift and grow, I can really be comfortable in, in, in the fact that like my future is going to continue to shift and grow. Yeah. Like I like to say, I've said it a couple of times recently is yesterday I was a different Julie. That's Today right. I'm a different Julie. Tomorrow I will be a different Julie and that will continue until, you know, my time here is done. And during that time, I'm going to enjoy every moment as it arrives. Then I'm going to let it go as it, as it, so it can come and it can go. Yeah. But I don't know where I am in this queue of exit. No one does. No. So live my day today, this moment right now, the best that I can. Enjoy it. Soak it in. Really, really just notice everything. You know, and let it go after, because the moment has now changed to this moment. That's right. But that is how I kind of just get through life. And and I'm not a, you know, I can do things like watch TV, but I, I'm personally sure. not really. That's not my gag. Gig. <laughs> yeah. Gag. You know, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. But, and and um, it's, you know, it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. 
but it's like you know there's a, you know like because there are times where we're going to do that we're going to times where we're still and we're going to need to be still and we're going to not know what to do and and the best way to not know what to do is sometimes do something you know and that might just be put put on a show you know uh, but when we know that see this is the interesting thing when we really and, and I've found this over the last couple of years, like this last line again, the master knows it is even the source of God, the void. Mm. And the void is within you. And it is the source of God. And it is within you. And it is the source of God. That just tells us that we are the source of God. We, we, we touch and we have that within us. And, you know, it's interesting when we talk because it's also, uh, it, it's this idea that how awesome are you as the source of God? Like, and that's why this last line is, and yet others still go on searching. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Oh my gosh, you know, I like to sit there thinking to myself on the other occasion, man, I'm awesome. I'm alive. Yeah. How cool is that? Absolutely. Do anything, see anything, speak anything. Just being here is just fabulous. Absolutely. And I this is, that. yeah, this is <laughs> such a beautiful sort of way to start off, right? Like, there's nothing to search for. No, there's no answer. You are God, like you are here, the source of God, like all things connected. And yeah, do whatever you want from watch Netflix to meditate to go go kayaking or or to climb a tree or go to your or job have a, good, have a good laugh at square club with your grandchildren that's always quite yeah. fun <laughs> do it yeah. do it and and none of it exists at a higher plane no. than any of it uh, anything else absolutely you know? And that's the, and that's why it's so beautiful to be able to be here and, and, and recognize that like what we're seeing, these particular things, the buildings, the trees, the reeds, the crows, there's no difference between those things and you. And the beauty that you see in that is the beauty that you see in yourself. And the ugliness that you see in that is the ugliness that you see yes. in yourself. And, and yes, particular things can get in our way, but we can get out of our way. Good work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please do let us know, and that is, you know, all of oh, us, yeah. how then, we can physically support you in your next move. Yeah, well. Like I have said, I've had so many words of support. Yeah. I, but, I will, but, yeah, will the definitely <laughs> be, I will definitely be, uh, once, yeah, I'm, I, I'm going to be putting it on my website shortly. Uh, okay. and so they'll, they'll be, it'll, I'm, I'm seeing if I can do something that's a pre-sale and once I do a pre-sale, once I have it on my site for pre-sale, then, uh, then you can support me there. Um, but then I'll also probably, once I decide on, what I'm going to do for the Oracle deck, I'll put it on a, uh, put it on a legitimate place where, where, you know, like, like I would never want to do anything just on my own, you know, like you yeah. can purchase something from me. That's one, that's one exchange and you can support me through, um, a, a vetted outlet, you know, like where people yeah. can, uh, where people can support me outright. Uh, cause I, you know, like, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't just take people's money with no, uh, with no, with nothing to back it up. So, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's the same for me as well. Yeah. And I just wanted to just very quickly say to you: in November, I will be paying these wonderful people of mind, and they usually send you a letter of receipt, which I will pop on all of my uh, websites and everything, so that people know that their Beautiful. money got where i said it was gonna go yes that is <laughs> you know, like you know like it's and, quite and, important. <laughs> and it's interesting at this time you know because the dow always tells us you know you don't have to prove yourself you can just Sometimes, live up, you know though. but 
But no, in our world today, with so much lack of trust, especially here on Wisdom, with some things we had happen, uh, you know, a year ago yes. or so, right? Like we we definitely want to, you know, stay above board. So um, yes, we appreciate. Yes, absolutely. We appreciate. Go, go through, go through the the the, uh, the vessel, which is obviously the masculine, and then yeah. we can all feel the feminine of achievement together. So that's yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. I love you so yeah. much. Love you. John. Yes. Thank you for number My four. best to everybody. Enjoy the water today. Yeah, will do. Love you lots. Love bye you. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, does anybody else want to come up and pick a number between 1 and 81? We picked number four with Julie. Went through that. The void. Tao is the void. And the void is within everything. As it relates to what is perceptible, everything is mostly void. As the origin of everything it is hidden within every particular thing. The master knows it is even the source of God. And yet others still go on searching. I really, you know, like patting myself on the back a little bit here. Like I really love how I ended that and this idea of like, and yet others still go on searching. It's the source of God. The void is the source of God and is within us. It's within every cell. The void is within every cell of everything on this planet. And it is the source of God. What is there to search for? And that's the big question, right? What is there to search for? If, if, if it's within you, there's nothing to find. You are it. Maybe, you know, we look at it like water and a fish and stuff, you know, like we're living in this space, but like, it's within you. You are God. And you can own that, you know? Okay, so that is uh, that was number four, and we uh, we read that through with Julie. I'm gonna pick a number. Um, I'm gonna pick thirty. Um, and if anybody wants to come up and pick a number between one and eighty-one, I welcome with open arms. So thirty <clears throat> is titled "Dao Does Not Dominate." Okay, so governing in any capacity when led by Tao, doesn't use force to gain power. Every force applied will suffer equal counterforce. So violence, however it is intended, will always rebound upon oneself. Where armies march, briars grow, and in their wake follows hunger and villainy. Skillful in what she does, the master achieves her goal and stops, neither forcing nor manipulating further. She knows that dominating goes counter to Tao, and whoever opposes Tao will certainly die early. So what we have here is this these, these ideas about governing, and then, you know, I, I there's this imagery of where armies grow, briars, where armies march, briars grow, and in their wake follows hunger and villainy. Um, you know, like that's, and we look at the world today and we look at all the wars that have happened and we look at, we look at, we look at Spain who had their, uh, their bout with fascism and, and, um, and we look at what's going on in South America right now with having, having dealt with Pinochet and having dealt with all of the history that they dealt with with from the 80s and 70s 80s and 90s and 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 now they're they're rising up and they're saying you know like that's enough you know we have turned a corner we have turned a corner as uh, as human beings we've turned a corner as consciousness and but we look at the northern hemisphere and it's been ravaged so much by by so much war and and and, and you know, now we're, we're looking at like all of this inflation, we're looking at all of these things, all of this stuff that came up like with capitalism, like in order to, in order to have capitalism, we went through all these wars and, and what follows is hunger and villainy. And is that what's in front of us? Is that what's in front of us? Are we facing like, uh, you know, a catastrophic fall of, of capitalism that is going to have to really be adjusted so that you know like we don't we don't fall into the hands of this concept 
Um, skillful in what she does, the master achieves her goal and stops. Now, when we talk about the master being skillful in what she does, we're talking about this idea of like, what she does is coming from her, it's springing forth from her. And so she's skillful in that. It's not about her being good at, you know, building an engine or her being good at fishing or her being good at anything particular, but it's about understanding that she does what she does and she achieves her goal and then stops. This is about, um, you know, excess, neither forcing more, nor manipulating further. She doesn't need more. She has, she's skilled in what she does. So she does what she does to be able to, you know, not go hungry. She does what she does to not be against anything. She does what she does to go with the flow of things. And so she doesn't dominate. She doesn't try to dominate other things. She tries to allow those other things to do what they do because she understands that everybody is skillful in what they do. So just like her, she wants to allow other people to do what they do and she will be allowed to do what she does. Governing in any capacity when led by Tao doesn't use force to gain power. You know, you just do what you do. Every force applied will suffer an equal counterforce. So violence, however it is intended, will always rebound upon oneself. And that, so this is like about, and when we talk about governing, we don't have to talk about governing as it relates to governing other people. It can be even governing your body. Governing in any capacity when led by Tao doesn't use force to gain power. So you don't, you're not going to go on a diet. You know, like governing your body, if, if you're, if you want to lose weight or you want to do whatever you do, you know, like you don't, you don't, you don't attack your body with a diet. I mean, we all know that diets don't work, right? Like that's, that's, that's standard, that's standard knowledge. I think that's common knowledge, you know, so where armies grow, where armies march, briars grow. So if you, if you have a if you have a diet, a briar is going to grow there, right? And you're going to go hungry. Then, then what will follow is hunger and villainy. Now, what hunger and villainy mean here when it relates to diet isn't actual hunger. Like you can say, well, yeah, when I'm on a diet, I'm hungry. Sure. But what is, you know, like what's been scientifically proven, if you go on a diet, especially a restrictive diet, and you can't keep it, because it's so restrictive, your body is going to store fat. And so if you're fat, and you want to lose fat, and then you go on a diet to do that, you may do that, and then it will come back. And it might come back twofold. Why? Because it, because you marched an army in your body, instead of doing what you do. Right? So this is where it moves on. You know, like you don't have to force issues within your body or within your family or within your community skillful in what she does which means skillful in that which comes up through you skillful in being you the master achieves her goal and stops neither forcing nor manipulating further she doesn't need to force the issue she doesn't need to manipulate the issue she doesn't need to try and get people to do what she wants them to do all she has to do is allow those things around her to be she knows that dominating goes counter to the Tao, and whoever opposes the Tao will certainly die early. And that's a big deal, right? That's what we, that's what, that's where we're really kind of like putting everything right now. And she knows that dominating goes counter to Tao, and when you go counter to Tao, you will certainly die. And dying means like if you want war, if you want all of those things so that you can have things your way, if you want to manipulate, if you want to, uh, force issues or manipulate or do anything like that. Doing those things really puts you in a position to uh, have those things rebound upon you. Once they've rebounded upon you, then, you know, that's the, the violence. And there's no need to create violence. There's no need to put that on you. So, uh, so that is how the Tao does not dominate. And if you don't dominate, then you, like Tao, will exist and, and, and inspire those around you. So it's not about getting what you want as much as doing what you do and letting those things around you fall into place. 
So uh, that is probably it for today. Unless somebody wants to step up and give me a number between 1 and 81. I always appreciate having conversations around the Dow and how it might affect you. Uh, this is Martin John. I have, um, I have uh, written a translation of the Dow, and I'd love to share that with you. It will be up for sale through my website. Um, you know, shortly, uh, probably within the next couple weeks. And uh, until then, uh, you can send me tips through Venmo at Martin John underscore Garcia, or just reach out to me, DM me if you want to work together. If you appreciate what I do, send me a little message. It's always nice to get a little love through Instagram. Uh, you can follow me at Martin John over there on Instagram. Uh, and until next time, thank you so much for all of your help. Keep recovering yourself.